Well, welcome back to part two of Is Your Blade Straight? Last week, we were looking at a knife this way, and I noticed that the knife had a noticeable curve right in the body of the blade. This is a different blade. That one's been long repaired and sent back to the customer. But this one has uh, this similar problem. We also looked at a few straight edges. We looked at uh, this yardstick. We looked at uh, this straight edge from Japan. And we were looking at our uh, granite block here. All things which people have a tendency to assume are straight. But uh, let's actually talk about just how discerning we ought to be when we're looking at these items. Again, looking at the yardstick, one would assume that this is straight, but this yardstick in particular has a very definitive curve in it like this. This yardstick is curved like a C. Uh, and once I point that out, then even you, you start to be able to see with your eyes, like, yeah, that thing isn't perfectly straight. So uh, some of these things become more obvious to you with a careful examination and observation. Now this straight edge we were looking at, this is one that I've been using since Japan, since like 1998 or 1997. And uh, right here at this end, the whole end is kind of crooked off to one side here. It's crooked. And the interesting thing about these Japanese straight edges is it's actually got a fuller right down the middle like an old medieval sword. So the, uh, the middle is kind of hollowed out like this and then it's thick here, and then it thins down again towards the edges. And they build their rulers, their straight edges that way on purpose, so that when you check it, if one side is crooked, and like I said, it's crooked right here, I'm gonna point to it with my finger, I can actually hammer lightly the ridge on the inside of the crooked edge, and it forces it back the other way. So, these straight edges of these rulers are designed and constructed in such a way that takes uh, I I the assumption that the carpenter is going to occasionally, you know, at a work site, this thing gets stepped on, uh, it, you know, things are placed on it, and it gets abused, and the assumption is that uh, it's going to get stretched out of true, and so the carpenter is going to, from time to time, look at it and fix it right there on the job site. He can by giving a little, a little hammer blow to one side of the fuller of the other to force it over the other way. So yeah, I've now straightened this ruler. How about our granite block here that is machined with the intention of being flat? Now, a lot of people assume these are flat. I actually have a slight low spot in here. It's very difficult to see unless you look at it flat and in the light and then looking at it at different angles, your eye just kind of confirms what it can see. And that is right here, it was a, polished a little bit uh, too much and here's a little bit of a low spot. And if you wanted to fix that, uh, you know, in this case, we're using this for leather work. So not so important that it's perfectly flat, but if you wanted to use this in a machine shop, uh, as, a, uh, as a straight and true and flat surface, then you would need to true that up. And uh, as I said, it's low here, which means you would have to polish all these other high spots to bring that down low. And as you do it, you would be constantly checking it in light. Okay, so back to really our question and the problem at hand, which is the knives, right? And is this knife straight? Well, I see when I'm looking at this knife, I see right in here, I see a slight curve like this, okay? And the other thing I want to check is, is it twisted? This one's straight within, this one is untwisted within reason. We're always looking to see. Uh, is it straight within reason? Is it uh, untwisted within reason? I mean, if you, when you look at it this way, if you see the heel of the blade down here, you see the edge or the tip up like this, or inversely like this, then, then you've got a problem that's definitely going to need to be corrected, and we'll deal with that in a second. 
So let me introduce you to my little battery of tools here. First of all, uh, for you viewers, what you can't see is that the way this chair and this stomp are positioned is I'm always looking outside into the natural light. Behind the viewers is a big shutter door which is always open and that's where we angle to find the best natural light each and every day. But yeah, let me talk about some of the tooling here. We have a stump. The stump is not perfectly flat. I mean, as it gets used day after day after day, the surface is constantly changing. So uh, we have to decide, do we want a concave surface to hammer into? Do we want a more or less flat surface? Do we want a convex surface, which we would find right here? Uh, you know, I can hold my stump like this and I can see all the different surfaces on there and how I might use those to my advantage. Don't just come up to the stump, hammer on it and assume you've done what you needed to do because every single different part of the stump has got a different surface and is going to have a different effect on the blade. We have another stump behind me that we also use. So we have our stump, we have our light, we have my anvil from Japan. This belonged to my teacher, uh, Sensei Yasuyuki Sakimoto. And uh, we use this right here for this purpose. And uh, we have obviously a hammer. I have a ball peen hammer. I also have a beautiful hand forced hammer that uh, Arnon, my uh, fellow bladesmith here in uh, Portland, he made for me. He also spent many time in Japan and we worked on the Clever Cleaver project together. We have a smaller hammer here for doing minor adjustments and for peening pins. And then really we have uh, this workhorse here. This in Japanese is called a tagane. And really it's just kind of like a hammer with a carbide steel bit that's been brazed inside a groove in this hammer and then it's been ground and polished to basically a 45 degree angle. This is the little magic weapon that we use to straighten homogeneous steel blades like the all carbon steel Sabatier from France or the all stainless steel Henkels or Wusthofs from Germany or Cutco or whatever they are. When they need to be straightened, we use this tool. We also have these bending sticks in two different sizes. They're basically uh, a piece of uh, uh, hardwood with notches cut in them in different sizes. You got small to large notches there. And you can uh, see where your bend is and you can forcibly move your blade with one of these bending sticks. It's a little bit more gentle than hammering it with a hammer. And if you're really afraid of like breaking the blade, starting with a bending stick is not a bad place to start. Uh, you got to get used to it. Uh, the longer this handle is obviously the more leverage you have and you can really torque those blades. Uh, so go at it very gently at first. Uh, with some of the very thin stainless steel knives too at a lower Rockwell hardness, sometimes we can straighten with the bending sticks. But some of those really thicker ones like the, the Henkels with the really thick spine back here, uh, almost impossible. They'll spring a little bit and then you take the pressure off and they just go right back to where they were. They're kind of tempered more like a spring than they are really a blade anyway. If it's a laminated blade, like most of my blades are laminated with something hard in the middle and something softer on the outside, we can actually just go and use our brass hammer and uh, we can hammer it on the stump. So as I said, when I look at this, I see a curve this way. So I'm actually going to put the high side, I'm going to put the high side on my stump here and lightly give it a tap. I usually teach students to give it one tap and then look at it so that you understand the cause and effect of what that one hammer tap did. Uh, we uh, at Carter Cutler are a little bit more experienced. We do this hundreds of times every single day and sometimes we'll go tap, 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 tap trying to affect a, a large area in a gentle way and then we'll look at it and then students look at that and then they emulate that uh, but the problem with that is they're not sure what tap did what effect. So by just tapping it once and then looking each and every time, uh, you will learn this technique much more quickly because you'll uh, be able to associate what each tap is doing onto your blade. Okay, so I was successful with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some instruction on how 
we can correct for propeller twists in our blades or in any other straight edge for that matter. It's uh, most easily demonstrated uh, with some cardboard. Okay. Okay, so it's very helpful to think of uh, a blade, even though a blade usually is, is like pointy like this in profile, it's helpful to think of it in terms of just being like a flat bar, okay? And if our flat bar, when we sight down it, has a bend in it like that, it's very obvious. It's also obvious that this, if this is a laminated blade that we're going to put the surface that's high on our stump here and we're going to hammer that ridge. See that ridge? We're going to hammer right across that. One blow at a time, checking each time so you can see the effect. So that's very easy to understand. But when the blade is twisted like a propeller, okay, Let's say, let's say your blade looks like this and you're cutting with it and then I look at it on edge, the camera is going to see it, the camera is going to see it like that and this is the tip and this is the handle, you're going to say, oh wow, look, the tip is, is twisted up compared to the heel. Now this is uh, exaggerated but there are actually a lot of blades that have a considerable twist. Now, just for clarity, I'm right handed so I'm always checking to see if blades are twisted by holding the knife the same way each and every time. I don't look at them this way sometimes and look at them this way other times. Like I always look at this knife or any knives with the tip to my left and the handle in my dominant hand. And I'm edge is straight towards my eyes and I keep both eyes open and I'm trying to discern what's the tip doing in relationship to the heel of the blade. Okay, so if, if this was the tip and this was my handle and I'm looking at it this way, well, the tip is twisted up, as is evidenced from the camera angle that the spine of the blade here by the tip is twisted down. And no matter how I turn that over, I see the same thing. My mantra is up, up, down, down. And what that means is, is that when I'm holding this with my right hand and the tip is twisted up, as you can see, this tip of this knife is twisted up. Then I put it on my anvil and now you can see that ridge. It's right here. That's why this part is twisted that way. So the mantra is up, up. When I pick up my straightening hammer with my right hand and I'm on the right side of the blade, I start to hammer up right along that ridge and that is going to bring that back into place like this. Okay, now what if it was down? What if when I'm looking at my blade with the tip this direction and the handle in my right or strong hand and the tip is down? You can see that's clearly down, right? And I put it on my anvil or on my stump. Now you can see where that ridge is. Can you see that ridge? Here. That means that then when I pick up my hammer with my right hand, I'm now, I start hammering down that ridge and that will whoop, bring that bent tip back up. That's what the mantra up, up, down, down means. Now, everything I've just told you pertains to laminated steel blades where we've got something hard on the inside, carbon steel, Hitachi, white steel, 1095, 01, whatever it is, and something softer on the outside iron, uh, mild steel, mild stainless steel, 410 stainless steel, uh, Damascus steel that's low in carbon content and doesn't uh, harden when you quench it. So all of these, uh, you know, hammering, hammering a bend out, hammering the downward ridge to raise a downward tip or conversely a raised tip, you're hammering up. All of that's for laminated steel blades. Let's talk now about how we use the Tagane for homogeneous steel blades.
Have any of you guys ever seen a knife like this? Oh, so pretty, so cute. Uh, this is, uh, it says pure high carbon stainless steel. So in both cases, I'm looking at these knives and this one has a very pronounced curve in it. And this little guy also has a little curve in it. And uh, you know, we could, at, we, if we wanted to, we could first attempt to uh, straighten it. Look, I mean, you can see how much flex that has and see how it comes right back to where it was. So sometimes you can straighten them with the uh, bending sticks, but uh, usually we need to use the tagane. So here's the tagane, my little, my little uh, carbide steel tool bit. And this is curved in a U like this. So I'm gonna put the curved side up on my anvil and I'm gonna hammer in a series, uh, there it is. Yeah, that's all it took. This thing is shotgun straight. Now sometimes if we're gonna then grind the whole secondary edge, there's a theory that says you can push it just past a little bit where you want it to be from straight, and then when you grind, you're grinding a little bit of those grooves out, and then the, uh, the tension will release a little bit, and then you should end up perfectly straight. But that's really hard to gauge. So I like to get it straight, grind it, straighten it again if it needs it, polish it, straighten it again, and just do a little fine uh, tuning and fine adjustments. So it's difficult to see, but I've put vertical divots in the blade with the vertical part of my uh, Tagane tool. And what could we do if this blade, similar to our cardboard here, had kind of like a twist in it one way or the other? Well, we could, we could put diagonal divots in it instead of vertical. So if the blade was twisted like this, then by aligning your Tagane tool bit with that inner groove and hammering divots in there, it's going to push the steel outwards and uh, untwist it at the same time. So here again, this little guy, he's got a curve in him like this. So I put the curve up on the anvil. Give it a few, few blows, take a look at it in my natural source of light. I've straightened this section up pretty good, but there's still a little bit of a curve in it right here, so very lightly. And one last, and there it is. That's straight. Okay, we got one last guy here to do. I'll take a look at him. And it has a problem right here. Is it twisted? And it is twisted. When I look at it, the tip is twisted down a little bit and the heel looks up compared to the tip. But we don't care about what the heel is doing, we just use that as a reference. My mantra, up, up, down, down, always pertains to the tip when you hold it in the same dominant hand. So, my tip is down. So, that means that it's twisted down like this, which means that it looks essentially like this where this part of the blade is twisted down a little bit. So that means there's a ridge right here. If this was a laminated blade, I would hammer on the ridge on my stump. Because the tip is down, I'm gonna hammer down with the brass hammer in my right hand. But since this is a homogeneous steel blade and we're gonna use the tagane, what we're really looking at is what is the opposite side doing? And you can see the opposite side has a furrow right here, so we want to put the tagane in along this ridge and make divots to push the steel outwards. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, that tip is slowly coming up. I can see that. That made a huge difference. Made a huge, huge difference. By strategically placing those divots where I did, not only did I straighten it out, but now when I look at the spine, the spine is straight as well. So that's a vast improvement. I'm Murray Carter. This was to do with straightening blades. Are your blades straight? The real takeaway here is you probably don't have a Tagane at home. You might not have a stump. You might not have a brass hammer. But what you do have at home are a pair of eyes. 
And what I'm doing is I'm encouraging you to really scrutinize those things, whether it be straight edges, rulers, uh, you know, the top of your granite countertop, uh, top of your anvil, but especially your knives, these things which we assume are straight and flat, are they really? And so I'm encouraging you to use your eyes and really scrutinize your blades. And in no time at all, you're going to know more about blades than any of your neighbors do. My name is Murray Carter with Carter Cutlery. And now you know if your blades are straight or not, and theoretically, how you can straighten them if you need to.